Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question. What is perceived as very cool by society, but is actually a dick move? Social media pranks on your so that are supposed to show how great the so is in their response. I am thinking specifically about that when your boyfriend leaves act pissed, but say it's fine, go have fun, until he just offers to stay at home with you instead. That's not your boyfriend being sweet and thoughtful, it's you filming yourself emotionally abusing him. Lots of them are fake though, but the ones that aren't are the ones that really makes my blood boil. Oh yeah. There's one couple on TikTok that does a bunch of them, and admittedly I've only seen relatively harmless ones, but if your entire brand is pranking your boyfriend to show how pure he is, I am pretty sure at a certain point you have to assume it's just a performance and he knows he's being pranked. I think I know the couple you re talking about, all the comments compare him to a Labrador, I'm um, okay. JFC, yes. I saw one yesterday where the boyfriend said, I am just not happy anymore, and the rest of the video is her going blank, blood running cold, and pleading for him not to leave. Then he's like, CK. And she gushes and hugs and loves him. Fuck that. OMG, I just had an epiphany, and I realized what JFC means. Jesus fucking Christ. Holy shit, it was bothering me every time I saw it, but I always forgot to Google it, and now I finally know. Ah. Uh, clearly it's Yentucky Fried Chicken. Sigh. It's obviously John F. Kennedy. What I really hate is those people that decide to get a person to make a fake profile, with a fake girl, or guy to test their so's loyalty. Trust is meant to be a central part of a relationship, if you have to get one of these, you obviously don't trust them. If I had a so that did that shit on me I would break up with them. You don't trust me enough not to get one of them so why stay together? Still boggles my mind why those are popular. My homie and his wife routinely prank one another. He recently had his female friend call his wife to say he'd gotten her another woman pregnant. She does the same kind of pranks to him. I told him that would border on grounds for divorce if a man did that to me. I am a guy and for me that would also be borderline grounds for divorce if she told me or had someone else tell me she was pregnant with a kid that wasn't mine. What in the actual fuck? Justifying plain rudeness by saying the person is being sassy. Or walking over people and calling themselves a go-getter. This kind of shit is among the many, many reasons that big corporate jobs appeal to me as much as a kick in the bollocks from that massive car cannon from Top Gear. That or people who claim to tell it like it is, or what you see is what you get, etc. Sometimes, often actually, just shutting up and being polite is the right thing to do. There is such a thing as tact. We live in a society. It is important for us to get along. This. 100% of people I've met who are straight shooters, or say they just call it how they see it have been assholes. Tact is a thing. And notably, they don't like it when other people tell it like it is to them. Yup. Because it's not really about being honest, it's about being an asshole and wanting people to give you a pass for your shitty behavior. I am a straight shooter, and I honestly don't mind if someone is brutally honest towards me as long as they're not straight up insulting me, because I don't insult people. That's the ideal kind of straight shooter. I like people like you. I think the issue is that purposely unkind people also call themselves straight shooters. Actual straight shooters are just honest people with integrity, who don't dance around topics or expect others to pick up on hints. They're the trustworthy sorts of people where you know they're not bullshitting you. Those people are fantastic. We live in a society. Sorry not sorry equals I am a dick and proud of it. Or by adding, just saying. Or by adding, just kidding. Maya Angelou's perspective on this is so good. She calls the phrase don't mind me, I am brutally frank. As a summons to arms. I recognize the timid sadist who would like to throw a stone and hide her hand. 
And I sense the mealy-mouthed attacker approaching so if I cannot flee, I explain in no uncertain voice if there is even the slightest chance that I might take the statement the wrong way, be assured I will do so. I advise the speaker that it would be better to remain silent than to try to collect the speaker's bruised feelings, which I intend to leave in pieces scattered on the floor. Reading that years ago totally freed me. Or being direct. You can be clear and direct without being just plain rude. He's not that bad when you get to know him. Basically means he's a dick but you get used to it. Being an asshole in a classroom. Many kids seem to think it's really funny. I wish more students would take into consideration that their teachers have lives as well, and you're just making their day harder for them. Same with bus drivers. Why do kids have to hassle their bus driver? He or she gets them from home to school and back or whatever your arrangement, and it's a thankless job. They get up early every morning to make sure the kids arrive safe and on time. I swear where I I live the bus drivers on the public i.e. not school buses are two extremes, they're either ridiculously cheerful, or act like you personally took a piss in their cornflakes. There's very little in between. I started cycling though because my office moved, and the bus routes in Oxford were drawn by a coked up squirrel. An hour minimum according to the app, buses are often 30 to 40 minutes late outside of the city itself on top of that to go 5 fucking miles. Madness. I always liked it when the teachers were assholes to the bus driver. I drove a school bus for a few years, many a time, I had to have a private conversation with the teachers about their behavior during the trip. Even had to explain that the bus drivers can easily set the mood for the kids starting their day. I've never worked in that sort of environment, but I always teachers would be cool with the bus drivers. Especially during trips. The poor bus driver is usually left to walk around and be bored all day just waiting to take everyone back to school. In the week before schools shut down around here, there were kids at the high school pulling pranks like taking all the soap out of soap dispensers and trashing the hand sanitizer. I will literally never comprehend why some kids think causing problems for other people is so funny. Then again, some adults also think that. I am so tired of the expectation that no matter how badly the kids, their families, or the administrators treat us, we're the ones who are supposed to stay professional and just take the abuse, while smiling and continuing to do the work. I am a 20-year veteran and I've been through it over and over and I really think I am about to break. As a substitute teacher, the amount of abuse I get from kids isn't worth the $115. Zero zero, I get paid for a day. Kids be kids. But really, the fault isn't with the kids. The fault is systematical, by taking away all teacher instruments for dealing with that shit. And, okay, that can work. If the parents haven't became entitled, morally corrupt and overall don't have time to raise their kids right. So, now you have a kid that is not taught how to behave at home come into school, where that kid cannot be taught how to behave, because it will be viewed as a personal attack and any measure taken will be a violation of their rights. Those who dare to implement some action, have a high chance of having that kid's parent coming into school and throwing a tantrum how their kid is an angel. Meanwhile I am just blinking stupidly, recalling how I'd get a shitstorm from my parents had a teacher ever complained about my behavior, no questions asked. Later on, I always screwed with my teachers, was an disobedient child of sorts, but I have never crossed the line, and all the teachers loved me for it. The helicopter. Subreddit technically the truth. To impress a chick, do the helicopter dick. Helicopter dick. Jet skis of the air. These viral pranks where people pretend to cheat on, or even dump their so just to get a reaction. Even worse were the parents who would verbally abuse their kids for a prank. One family was so bad about it that CPS was called, and they wound up in huge legal trouble. Daddy 05 Yup
Family of 5 Abuses Their Kids YouTube This is wholesome family content. YouTuber says heck YouTube. You dare have the audacity. Children are here. We only promote wholesome yes, it's fine to slam your kid's head into a dresser content here. A strike. And a second one if complain. MXR got a strike on his channel for showing a clip of a 10-year-old shooting fireworks off while their parents filmed. It's not stated that's against the rules but YouTube said tough shit until people brigade them about it and they removed the strike. Also that same video is uploaded on multiple other channels with seemingly no penalties, as it's got thousands of views, and their channel hasn't been deleted. Markiplier and Critical got temporary strikes on their channels for showing an obviously staged road rage incident, it was a Russian dashcam video of costumed characters like Mickey Mouse pretending to beat someone up. Eventually YouTube wisened up and got rid of both strikes. Markiplier got the strike, basically, for criticizing YouTube for not striking him, since Critical got the strike a week before Mark and Mark himself took to Twitter to complain about how he felt like he was being favored. Meanwhile there's a kill your pets on YouTube phenomena going around and YouTube is cool with it. I rem remember this one in which the parents kept ignoring their obviously distressed, crying infant with the attitude of nobody cares what tf is wrong with these people. They're legit ruining their child's mental health. These kind of shitbags need birth control pills along with a lesson on Eric Erickson's trust vs mistrust. Telling your friends to run so you can defeat the Balrog on your own to get all the XP and move up a level. Yeah and taking the piss out of your mate's height. Especially when your mate offers you a go of his ring. Posting dozens if not hundreds of pics of your kids online and on social media. Kids deserve privacy and anonymity, I find it grossly inappropriate to force them to grow up in public or under the prying eye of anybody and everybody. Maybe a couple family portraits here and there is fine, but all their embarrassing or even mundane moments is not okay. Let them be kids. Edit. Thank for the platinum. A girl I know from school posts endless pictures of their kids' adventures in potty training. She even acknowledges that they'll find it embarrassing when they're older. Boggles my mind that she thinks that's acceptable. For one, your kid has a right to privacy. Secondly, what normal person wants to see your unclothed kid taking a shit? Imagine trying to get a job knowing that when your possible future boss googles your name the first thing they see is video of baby you shitting. That's my life if you remove the word baby. When she's old, her kids can do the same to her. Look at mom using the potty chair. Too old to sit on a regular loo lol lol accompanied by a picture of an old lady with gray hair, nightgown, and slippers trying to do her business. I was recently having a discussion with my husband. There was a time several years back where it was absolutely taboo to post pictures of your children for safety purposes. But we've noticed recently that children's pictures are everywhere on social media even reddit. But agree with you locust 80, I really don't want to or need to see pictures of kids everywhere. Let them have some privacy. Edit. Spelling. Yeah. We have a private Google. Photos album family has access to. No other shit goes on social media. My wife and I made the choice that we wouldn't post anything about our child no pictures, no name, nothing outside of acknowledging their existence, and that we love them very very much and have asked our family to do the same. We send family and friends pictures directly, and happily talk up a storm on request, but we are trying as hard as possible to keep our child's social media presence at nil. When they are old enough, obviously they can do whatever they please, but we want that to be their choice. Privacy is a rare and deeply personal resource, we don't want to squander theirs without their consent and input. Proposing in public Or proposing when it takes focus away from the proposes accomplishment. Like when the propose is getting an award or recognition. So one when a singer was advancing on a reality singing competition. That's an insecure controlling move. And doesn't bode well for the marriage. 
Did you see it, or did you see it on the show? If you saw it on the show then it probably wasn't some insecure controlling move. It was probably the show, and the singer probably agreed to the idea. Yeah reality shows are as fake as the rest of TV, and as controlled as the rest of TV. Person probably proposed, they asked the two of them to do it for the cameras after it happened and staged it to what you saw. My friend's boyfriend proposed. At her doctoral hooding celebration. They are no longer together. People actually do sometimes think it's a good idea. If you can't let someone have their moment, you're either a dick or an idiot. Neither are good traits in a partner. It also takes away from the moment for everyone else graduating. Someone proposed on the stage at my college graduation, and it's all anyone talked about. 700 people trying to celebrate their accomplishments over the last four years, and this guy had to make it all about him. If that wasn't bad enough some people skip the engagement and go straight to public surprise weddings. I don't even get why they think that's a good idea. It didn't work for Gaston, why would it work for you? If it didn't work for Gaston, it can't be done. Nobody is like Gaston. Forget that, some people skip straight to a surprise pregnancy. Surprise them with the Spanish Inquisition. I wasn't expecting that. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. And then you have the pregnancy in public. That's just awful. Women in the pics always seem happy about this, but I don't want someone else picking out my dress, colors, flowers, and invite list. Rapper Ludacris did that to his wife for Christmas, and the rumor is that he did it because she was planning an expensive wedding, and he didn't want to foot the bill. He had his mother pick out her dress. Needless to say, it was ugly AF. I'd see that as a huge red flag, knowing what I know now about relationships. I saw this proposal the other day on the internet, and it was so uncomfortable to watch. A fireman from the US saved up his money for who knows how long, and he and his girlfriend flew to that hotel in Saudi Arabia that looks like a sale can't remember the name. He made arrangements with staff and sent the ring via express mail to the concierge in charge there. From the airport in Riyadh they then flew a private helicopter to the hotel, and waiting there was a red carpet treatment with a dozen staff lined up. They step out of the helicopter and the concierge hands the guy his box with the ring in it. He opens it up right there by the helicopter and says, let's do this. He gets on one knee and asked her to marry him. She looks uncomfortable, forces a smile, everyone is watching, even the birds of the air, the flocks of the field, and the fish of the sea are all staring. And looking around she says, sure. Reminded of the OL adage, a fool and his money are soon divorced. Or something like that. Why do I always feel as though the most extravagant or ridiculous proposals don't end well? Because in a healthy relationship you talk about everything, including marriage. So an over-the-top proposal feels rather silly. Jesus. It's Saudi Arabia, she was probably wondering what the punishment for rejecting a marriage proposal was there. I see you're proposing in public and raise you grand epic public proposals. I don't miss the endless pile of flash mob videos that often accompanied proposals and plagued the internet from 2009 to 2011. I would automatically say no, even if I am in love with the person. Just the fact that that person is putting me in a situation where I feel pressured to say yes or otherwise being called a cold-hearted bitch by a bunch of strangers if I say no, it's a huge red flag for me. Totally agree. The only exception to that rule would be proposing to someone who has already said they don't mind the idea of a public proposal and you are in a relationship where you are already discussing marriage. If both conditions are not met don't be a dick, propose when it's just you two together. If you're not in a relationship where you have discussed marriage there should never be a proposal really. Not liking anything mainstream and acting as though that somehow makes you superior to everyone. It took me a long time to realize that not doing something you want to do because it's too mainstream is exactly as lame as only doing something because it's cool. 
Yup, a real individual does the things that they like simply because they like them. They don't think about how the things they do or buy or say affect their perceived persona. There are a lot of they, very mainstream musicians or groups that I listen to, in addition to some that aren't as well known. I've got hobbies that are very mainstream, and some that are niche. I do these things because they make me happy, not because I care about my image or some shit. This was what I thought until the judge said that killing people was bad and I shouldn't do it. On the upside, like 10 years later when you no longer take yourself so seriously, you get to enjoy the entire run of friends in binge form. Could you be any more insightful? I agree, getting over myself has opened up so many options. I am just now finishing up Adventure Time, which is a fantastic series. I recently binged both Harley Quinn and the new DuckTales. Both equally good shows but for different reasons. And yes, I am always down to watch Friends, but these days I am more into Cougar Town. Ah, the good old hipster paradox. It's funny, because in an effort to be different from the mainstream, they imitate one another and create a new mainstream. Wanna see this in action? Go to Williamsburg in Brooklyn. It's a hipster clone factory. Agreed. There's a world of difference between non-conformist and anti-conformist. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.